Hey guys, so what do you really have to know about PPIs, proton pump inhibitors? Don't skip learning this part for your boards or as a practicing MP. So first of all, what are PPIs? Some examples, Protonix, or Cryosec, or Nexium, or Prevacid. Um, those are probably the most common ones you've all seen as an RN. So you know those, know that they're proton pump inhibitors and know they're generic and the brand names. Um, why do we use PPIs? Well, um, we want to block, we want to prevent, we want to reduce that uh, acid in the stomach, right? So if someone who has a gastric ulcer or duodenal ulcer, someone who's complaining of heartburn, GERD, just an actual disease, bears the cephicus definitely in a GI, um, as a GI uh, prophylaxis, right? So someone who's been on NSAIDs for a long time or is on steroids or perhaps has a active GI bleed, like in a hospital setting, or is at high risk for one, uh, for stress ulcers, H. pylori, obviously in combination with the other medications as well, okay? Um, how do we administer it? 30 to 60 minutes before a meal, I think most of us know this, um, for the best effect, right? And an empty stomach. Okay, this section is an important one. When we think about PPIs, we gotta know the long-term side effects, some of the most common things. This often uh, will pop up on your boards and definitely as a practicing NP, you need to know this, right? So pay attention to these type of questions um, and these side effects. So long-term use can lead to increased risk for C. diff infections. Um, it can lead to low magnesium. It can lead to B12 deficiency, osteoporosis, and we want to caution using these with some kind of kidney issues, okay? So, um, you know, you might have a question that asks you about what labs would be you checking. You know, you obviously usually check the CBC, BMP, but we want to throw in a, a perhaps a magnesium in there to um, make sure that person's magnesium is that low. You might be checking their B12 levels um, if they're on a long-term PPI. Uh, you might be prescribing or advising them to start using a B12 if they're using it. Um, another thing is the osteoporosis thing. So, you know, somebody with osteoporosis obviously high, high risk for fractures. So to pay attention to this, um, especially for your boards, because I promise you something along these lines will pop up on there, okay? Another thing is uh, starting and seeing the PPIs. Um, whether you're, again, whether you're practicing or if you're reading a question uh, for your boards, pay attention to what the patient is saying to you or the question is asking you, right? So if they're complaining of, if the patient or the question is complaining of uh, symptoms every three months, you're not gonna jump into PBIs. You're gonna start them low. You're gonna start them with, you know, TUMS. Uh, if the patient has, you know, confirmed GERD, um, you're gonna start them with the PBI. So really, when that question or that patient is in front of you, really pay attention to what they're saying, okay, before choosing what you would give them or what answer you would choose. Um, I know this is always really confusing for someone, but just think it, think it through logically. Um, what else did I want to tell you? It's also also, also important to remember that um, long-term use can uh, lead, when you start to take them off, can lead to rebound acid. So it's very, very important to taper them off of a PPI. All right, that sums up some PPIs. It's simple, 